celebration of Jakim. Our uh, honorable speakers for today, Mr. Martin Houghton and Mrs. Fatima Vapari from Sukha Consulting, Private Limited, London. Yang berbahagia Datuk Haji Mahzan Mahyudin of Jakim, Senior Officers, Secretary of Ilim and Jakim, ladies and gentlemen. Alhamdulillah, with blessings and willingness from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, we are here today to listen to the most valuable speak uh, uh, the development of Islamic uh, Affairs Malaysia, Jakim, and also Institute of Islamic Training Malaysia, Ilim, and University of Islamic Sciences Malaysia, UC. Al-Fatiha. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan wa'ala-dhin. Amin. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Hamdan yuwafi ni'amahu wa yukafi umazidah. Ya Rabbana laka al-hafuh. All praise is due to the Almighty Allah, the cherisher and the sustainer of the world. May peace and mercy of Allah be upon his Prophet Muhammad, his family, companion and followers. Dear Allah, we hosted by the Department of Islamic Development Malaysia, Jakim, and the University of Islamic Science Malaysia, USIM. Ya Allah, we are truly honored to host this fruitful occasion. Let our efforts succeed well and secure our success. Give us the good of this world and the hereafter. Ya Allah, please guide our program today towards harmony and solutions, great minds and ideas. Cleanse our hearts, unburden our emotions, not the thunder. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanah wa fi al-akhirati hasanah wa qina azab al-nar. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Taqabullahu alaikum Selamat pagi and good morning um, Thank you so much for your very very kind invitation to bring us here today And thank you also for making the time, I know you're all very busy So it's making the time to come along and hear what we have to share with you um, Martin and I are going to split the time um, sort of, you know, over the course between now and 11 a.m. Do you need to, yeah, is this okay? You cannot hear. Is that better? No? Organizational development to take you to, towards success. And then Martin is going to spend some time with you to drill down into this and talk about the role of leaders and how you lead your organization in this direction. Okay, so where I'm going to start um, is really just to set a broad context that I think will probably feel quite familiar to many of you. Okay. We spend an incredible amount of time in our world of work, okay, personally and collectively, locally and globally. We spend more time in our work environments than we do in any other. Okay. We spend more time working than most of us actually spend time sleeping or with our families. So it's not really surprising when we begin to think about the world of work and particularly the future of work and the future of our workplaces in order to ensure that they are the most productive and engaging environments that we can spend our time in, individually and with others. Okay. Some of the words on this screen will probably feel very familiar to you. These are some of the trends that have been emerging over recent years, and some of them are actually taking much more speed and shape even as we speak internationally. So, you know, some of this will feel, if I turn here, some of this will feel really quite familiar. If you think about the, 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 the expectations we have of our environments and the future of work, you know, we all want places to work that are collaborative, that are flexible and engaging, are agile and responsive. We want to create environments that are creative and innovative, that actually enable us to experiment and do things differently. Okay? What I'm actually asking you to consider, though, is what does the world of work mean for you in Jakim? Okay? Not the world of work that you might want, which is helpful, but actually the world of work that you might need. What is the need for this organization? As we understand it, we were speaking to some of your colleagues yesterday, and we know that you have recently been through quite a major restructuring program. 
Um, and if I'm looking at my notes here, just to make sure I get it right, you have 10 new directors, you have 27 principal assistant directors. So you've taken a lot of time and trouble to ensure that you've got the right leaders in the right roles to take you forward. Okay. And if I look at further down in these notes, what we also know is the type of organization that you're striving to be is, as it says here, to drive Jakeem more brilliant, to be more brilliant in the future. Okay. So you have aspirations that are high, aspirations that can engage mind and spirit in that endeavor. I want to take you back a little bit and remind you of some of the principles around high performance. So what do we know about high performing organizations? And I'm going to just draw on some of the work that might seem familiar to you. And if not, you know, if you Google these names, you will get lots of references to the right material. So to begin, McLeod and Clark. McLeod and Clark did an incredible piece of work on behalf of the British government about 12 years ago. And in that work, what they identified was some of what they call the key levers. So what are the levers that you pull in order to engage your staff population to meet your organizational aspiration? And then two or three years ago, they revisited that work to say, is it still timely? Is it still fit for purpose? Does it still reflect what we actually know we need to do in our organizations? And they found that it was. Okay. So I just want to remind you a little bit about what the four levers are that they were actually suggesting, okay, and they still suggest now. What they're saying is that we need a strong strategic narrative. We need our leaders in the organization to be able to articulate, to give shape to what this organization is all about. What is it we're aspiring to do? What is our vision for our future? How do we want people to behave in order to take us further forward? Okay. This is really around a skill for storytelling. What do we tell our people? Not once a year when we have our annual you know, get together and everybody comes together and we celebrate our success. But what is, what's the story that we tell all the time? What's the story we tell in our conversations with one another? What's the narrative around what we do, how we do it, what we do well? What may be some of the things that are getting in the way of our success? How do we tackle those? How do I tackle it individually? How do we tackle it together? Okay. They also tell us quite a lot about employee voice. Okay? And this is really, when we, so when we talk about employee voice, what we're really saying is, what can our people tell us about how things really are? Okay? We have this aspiration, we have a goal, but how are things on the ground? How do they look and feel? Do we feel that what we do every day is actually taking us further forward in the right direction? Are there some things that are getting in the way? And if they're getting in the way, what can our people tell us about how we can improve and change and modify what we're doing? Because if I spend my time, if I'm spending eight hours a day doing something and I don't feel it's actually quite going, the right thing to be going forward, perhaps I also have a solution for that. Perhaps if I speak with my manager, I could say, this is how I'm doing it, but actually maybe if we try it this way, we might make further success. So how do we give, give our people the opportunity to engage in conversations, two-way conversations, not just the narrative that comes from the top down, but also how do we engage our people to be able to give messages back? And then we have managers. At an operational level, our managers are really are our key to success. You know, as I say to some of my clients, they're almost like the join. They are the link between what we're aspiring to do and how we deliver that day to day. These are the people who are engaging our people every single day. And that relationship between manager and employee is absolutely vital because it's our managers who actually bring alive our vision they keep it alive, and then they ensure that the people who are doing the delivery can see the golden thread. And you may be familiar with that term. You know, the golden thread is the link between the organizational vision and the aspiration and what people's contribution is. So can I see that my contribution lends itself in this way to the aspiration? Am I sure that what I'm doing is the right thing to do? 
And that brings us to integrity. And this is really the glue of your organization. The glue that says, are our values, the way in which we bring our people together, are those values, the right values that we expect people will demonstrate in their daily activity. So the behavior, you know, our brother just did our introduction earlier and he asked us to consider that we speak in a voice that brings, that raises a flower rather than raises thunder. How do we do that? You know, what are the values that reflect that? What are the values? Can we give articulation? So can we say the words that give the val give us the values that say, this is how we expect our people to behave? What's the behavior we want them to demonstrate day to day? I want to also share with you just a couple of definitions. Alchi tells us that culture is the way we do things around here. It's very simple. The culture of any organization is simply what you do, okay? Individually and collectively. Our culture is, is prominent all the time. As you walk through the door of an organization, you can often tell what the culture is. Does the person at reception look up and engage you? Do they welcome you? Is the person that you're speaking to telling you what, where you need to go, how you need to get there? The person that you're meeting, are they ready to meet with you? Have they come ready with the right notes? Have they come ready to make the time to have the right conversation with you? you know, these are all the ways in which we demonstrate what the culture is. And the culture, if you look just across to the right, Harvard Business Review sort of broke that down into the sort of the key elements of culture. And what they suggest is that this is about our vision, our values, it's about practices, our people, our narrative, and our place. So culture is just not one thing, it's everything. And we need to be paying attention day to day, little by little, in order to build the right culture to support your aspiration. Below that, there's a couple of definitions around organizational development. And, and I just want to stop here a little bit to say, you know, lots of people talk about organizational development, say, we're gonna do organizational development. My clients say that all the time. You know, I go from my first meeting and they'll say, oh, we want to do some organizational development. And I say, what does that mean? And they say, well, you know, we wanna be better. And I say, better at what? And they say, you know, just better. You know, we just wanna be better at what we do. And I think, but, you need to know specifically what you want to be better at in order to get better at it. Because you have to know what you want to spend your time and your resource and energy doing in order to make a difference to it. I'm gonna move on. Okay, so a framework for organizational development. This has been around for quite some while. McKinsey did this work quite some time while ago, but I would suggest that this is a great place to start to begin to think about a framework for organizational development. And the reason I say this is because McKinsey's work is really well grounded in a strong body of research. For those of you that may not know this model, let me just tell you very briefly. What they are suggesting is that organizational development is made up of seven key elements seven key elements. That's why it's called McKinsey's 7S, and they all begin with an S, so they made it nice and simple for us. What they're suggesting also is organizations that focus on the hard elements, and there's, of those there are three, okay? The hard elements are strategy, structure, and systems. Okay, they're the hard elements. Organizations that focus on those three will make some real progress towards organizational development, okay? Now we know, as I said earlier, you've already done considerable work in the space around your structure, okay? You've already done that, that's accomplished. You know the right people are in the right places. I'm expecting those people will now be looking around in their new roles and looking at the systems and the strategy and the intent of where they need to be spending their time. But what McKinsey also tells us is that for real success, real deep level success that's going to be sustainable long term, you need to spend time on the lower four S's. And they are shared values. So this is the integrity piece. 
Okay? What are the values in this organization? How do we want our people to behave every day in order to take us forward? There is a piece around style. And when they talk about style, what they talk about is leadership style. So are our leaders behaving in a way that relates not only to the values that we espouse, but do they actually demonstrate that? What our leaders do, people pay attention to all the time. A leader walks into a room, you don't even have to say very much for people to be listening, to be looking, to be seeking direction. Because, and those people are the people that people pay attention to and say, oh, if that's how they do it, then that means that's how I can do it. So are our leaders behaving in a way that supports our values? Are they demonstrating to people every day, role modeling, if you will, every day, this is the way we do it here. And this is what we pay attention to. And Martin's going to speak much more in detail about this. They also talk about our staff. So where are our good people? Do we know that we've got the right people in the right jobs in the right places? Okay. Yesterday, when we were speaking with Sister Usma over there, she said, oh, yeah, she said, we have clarity between my role and my manager's role, my colleagues' roles. Do we understand that? Do we know what each of us is contributing and how that makes a difference? So what I know that is that where I spend my time is as important as the next person, but what we do together combined is really the full force of it. And what they also then talk about is skills. And this is a really important part. Do our people have the right skills? Do they have the right skills to do what they need to do? So have we equipped them with not only the technical skills, and the skills around, when I say technical, there's technical skills to do with your job. So if you're a planner, are you a good planner? Okay. If you're an administrative assistant, can you do admin? Can you use the systems and the technology that supports that role? But do they also have the technical skills? If we want this agile, flexible environment that's responsive, do our people have the technical skills around being technically savvy to use the tools that we make available to them, the, the right tools in the right place. But more important than all of that is do our people have the skills around interpersonal relationships? Do they have the skills around facilitation? Do they have the skills to be able to come together with others and not only say, this is what we need to do, but also be able to talk about how we're going to do that? How do we build the right relationships how do we engage in the right conversations? How do we know that when there's an issue or a challenge, and sometimes people don't like to talk about problems, but when there's a problem, how are we going to resolve that? How do we bring the right people together to find the solutions that are actually going to solve that particular challenge? So that's McKinsey. What I want to do now is actually share with you an example of how we've done this with an actual client. Because talking about OD in theory, you know, you don't need me to talk to you lots about that. You can Google that, you can find the right information. Everything I've shared with you is already out there in the public domain. You know, I just wanted to remind you of a few things that might be helpful for today. But what we really want to do is talk about um, our experience of working with clients. And as you've heard, probably between Martin and I, we have, what, at least 60 years experience. Well, I've got nearly 60. <laughs> so yeah, so we have quite a number of years between us working with clients and we both have a similar background in that we have worked both in-house, so you know, in, within organisations and we've also worked as consultants. In the last 10 years, as our good colleague said earlier, um, I set up Zuka Consulting to work with organisations and we work predominantly, both of us, um, with, across a wide